Hey, welcome back, Whiskey Questers, to another episode of Whiskey Quest. If you guys are new to the channel, my name is Antonio, and in this channel, I like to try whiskeys from all over the world. I like to add a drop of water to each one of them just to see if it changes. You'll never know unless you try it. So if you're curious about whiskey, want to learn more about whiskey, just in general, you love whiskey, consider hitting that subscribe button with the bell notification. Stick around for more videos. Let's move on with today's review of Jack Daniels Master Distiller Series Number Two. But before we get started, I gotta give a quick shout out to the Whiskey Dude. The Whiskey Dude is the person behind all these whiskeys that I've been reviewing, all these samples. Without him, none of these videos would have been possible. So do me a favor, check him out if you haven't. Give him a sub if you like his content. I put a link to his channel in the description below. You know what to do. Now let's move on to the review. Today we got Jack Daniels Master Distiller Series Number Two, and we'll be doing a comparison with Number One because he says that there is a difference, even though they are all the same old Number Seven bottled at 43% ABV. So let's find out for ourselves, right? So this one will be whiskey number two. And whiskey number one will be in this other glass. So like I said, these are bottled at 43% ABV. These are just regular old number seven recipe. Nothing fancy besides being bottled at a higher proof. And the reason behind all of these is just because they wanted to pay tribute to all the master distillers that uh, Jack Daniels has had over the years. And this one right here is dedicated to master distiller Jess Motlow. So what I'll be doing in these videos, since these are basically made just to uh, pay tribute to the master distillers throughout the years. So I'll talk a little bit about uh, each master distiller for each bottle and all of this information you can find on their website. Really awesome storyline, or I should say a timeline that they have on there. When Jack Daniels passed away, he had nobody to pass down his properties too since he wasn't married and didn't have kids so what he did he gave it to his nephew Lem Motlow which is the brother to Jess Motlow now Jess Motlow was the second master distiller and together they managed uh, Jack Daniels distillery through prohibition and the Great Depression so during prohibition Jack Daniels was one of those distilleries that wasn't allowed to distill so what Jess did was just store a bunch of Jack Daniels whiskey in different locations and warehouses. He had them throughout Birmingham, Cincinnati, and St. Louis. And in 1933, when Prohibition ended, they couldn't just start producing whiskey right away since there was a shortage of uh, ingredients to distill whiskey. I mean, can you imagine being so many distilleries that got shut down during prohibition and then all of a sudden it's like all right you guys can distill again everybody's jumping on trying to get as much product as they can so it took them a few years to get back into production pop quiz guys on what date was prohibition ended if you guessed anything besides december 5th of 1933 you were wrong now i'm pretty bad with dates but that's just one of those dates that you just can't help but remember, right? All right, so since we already went through a little bit of the history there, let's get onto the whiskey and see how these compare. So first of all, the color in this is your usual Jack Daniels caramel color, nothing different there. And on the nose, oh, nice banana note. Now over the weekend, my daughter makes some chocolate covered bananas and when I eat one, it was like right away it hit me. I'm like, wow, that's Jack Daniels right there. So I discovered, or through my tasting that, there's a little bit of chocolate in this too. So I'm gonna, from now on, I'm just gonna think chocolate covered bananas. And you got that barrel char, a little bit of that varnishy kind of note that I get on the regular number seven. That's interesting compared to the number one. It's a little bit lighter. Same notes, just a little bit stronger on this one. Let's see how they taste. Cheers, everybody. 
Let's see how this one compares. Hmm. That's weird. All right. So where this one has a little bit more like burnt brown sugar. Now this one has a lot more banana note. Maybe maybe because the bottle has been going down a little bit. I don't know if that had something to do with it, but they are a little bit different. I think I got a little bit more cinnamon on series number one than I did on number two. Let me try that again. Yeah, a lot more oaky on this one. That's so weird. A lot more oaky on this one. A lot more cinnamon coming out of this one. Wow. Man, I wish I had more Glen Cairns to do a blind because that would be awesome to see what I would think blind. Hmm. I might have to bust out my other glasses for the next videos. Or maybe I'll leave that for the last, very last one. What do you guys think? Put it down in the comments below. Would you like to see me do a, a blind tasting? Well, maybe I'll think about that if, if when I try the other ones, if I start seeing that they are very different, then I might have to do a blind tasting just to see. So I'm going to add just a touch of water to each one of these and see what happens. Just, just a touch. Boop. Boop. So I'm not going to wait too long. Let's just see what happens to these right here. Uh, same time as before on the last review I started getting more like honey notes Oaky I want to say maybe a citrusy kind of note orange citrus Yeah a little bit more honey coming out of this one what the hell is going on they're supposed to be the same why right? maybe it's just my brain playing tricks i mean i don't know let's see how they compare in the palette yeah i'm getting a lot of citrus this time orange citrus oak like like you know char how about this one actually yeah in the palette this time it they they are very very similar I still get just a little bit more cinnamon on this one than I do on this one. That is interesting. But nonetheless, they're not like super, super different where you're going to be like, oh, yeah, I like number two better than number one. So, but they are a tiny bit different. I wonder if these are like, uh, like not single barrels, but maybe small batches. They just didn't disclose that. So they're not all going to be super identical hmm. they don't say nothing like that on, on their website yeah a little bit more candy banana going on this time than on this one this one's just that honey banana notes kind of hidden so they are slightly different but like i said not to to the extreme so my final thoughts on series number two uh i don't think i mentioned the price on this this Normal price would go for, I think it was 30 to $40 that I saw online. And it all depends where you went because I don't think you can find these now. And if you do, it's gonna be secondary market. And then of course we know secondary market's not cheap. And honestly, I don't think this is worth picking up on the secondary market. But if you do happen to see one at a store for around that price and you like Jack Daniels, definitely pick one up. Uh, just higher proof and I don't think it's gonna disappoint you if you like Jack Daniels already now for that price a couple bucks more you could probably just get the single barrel and I thought that was a lot tastier for sure you guys like this review once you guys give me a thumbs up don't forget to share it with your friends and comment below guys I want to hear what you guys think have you tried the number two or any of the other ones and what do you guys think? Are they slightly different or is it just me? And again, if you've been watching a few of my reviews and you like what you're seeing, don't forget to hit that subscribe button with the bell notification. Stick around for more videos. Thanks again for joining me on this whiskey quest. And cheers, everybody. Peace.